All right, hello everybody. Welcome to today's Book of the Day show. I'm here in my backyard at Beverly Hills, and I'm on the phone with uh, one of the greats out there right now, Gary Keller. If you, I'm sure if you watch any of my stuff, you've seen that I recommend his book, The One Thing, as one of the top books in my top 150. Uh, he's the chairman and co-founder of Keller Williams Realty, which is the largest residential real estate uh, company in the United States. And in addition to that, which is an amazing feat, he's also gone on to sell 1.5 million books and be a New York Times bestseller. So we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. We're going to be talking about how you focus, uh, the power of focus in a distracted world. And then we're going to go, for those of you in the accelerator, uh, we're going to have some sections on building companies, marketing. You don't, build, you don't become the number one in the United States in anything unless you're good. So, Gary, thanks so much for being on today's call. You're welcome. And I hate to correct you, but actually number one in the world. Oh, number one in the world. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's better. That's and I hate to correct you again, but it was two million, over 2 million books sold. Okay, I'm reading from the back of this cover of this book. So I need to yeah, that's outdated. Yeah, that's two years old. Well, so it well, sold another half a million, so two million. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's jump right in. I like to do the best stuff first. What I love Good, about let's, do it. let's talk about the power of focus in a distracted world, and I'm just going to let okay. you talk because you're the master. Well, ask me whatever you'd like to know. I mean, the the truth of the matter is, is that most people don't understand focus. They they think it's a concept instead of a, of a instead of an action item, and so they talk about it, but they don't actually do it. What's the That's reward the for being focused? So let's say somebody here listening on a one to ten considers themselves a six. They can focus, but they're not the most focused person in the world. If you could move them what you talk about in this book, and they can move themselves to a nine. What have you seen tangibly change in your life and other people by becoming more focused? Well, focus is very brutal because I'm going to say, well, what's your goal? What do you need to accomplish? If there's, if there's one goal of all the goals that you've set for yourself right now, what's the one that matters most? Such that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary, and you'd be happy with the accomplishment of that. And that's going to force someone to set a priority. Most people set priorities. And I don't understand that. If priority means doing the most important thing, how can you ever have priorities? Mm. You can't. Mm. Yeah, you can't have the most important things. It doesn't make actually make sense. So uh, we have we have a priority. So I'd ask you, what's the most important thing that you can do, such that by doing it, by accomplishing that goal, and you're going to give me an answer. You're going to ultimately say, well, if I can only do one, I'm going to do this. I say, okay, that's all I want. I want you to do one. I want, I want one goal accomplished. What is that? And you're going to give it to me, and I'm going to say, great. Now, based on that goal, when you look at all the things that you could do in order to accomplish that goal, what would be the one thing you could work on right now that if you got that done, everything after that that you need to do would be easier or unnecessary? And you're going to give me an answer. And I'm going to say, well, let's just stop right there. Now, let's go to your calendar. Now, how many hours a day do you think it's going to take that you're going to have to focus on to get that one thing done in order so we could get on to the other things? And you're going to give me a time, and I'm going to say, oh, great. So what time in the morning can we start at that? And you're going to give me a time. I say, great. Can we block out four hours to do just that, or at least three hours? Can you give me three? And you're going to say, sure. I say, okay, great. Can you give me a plan? What's the one thing you can do to protect your time such that nobody invades the time while you're doing those things? And you're going to tell me that. I say, great. Can you implement that? And you say, yes. Okay, great. I'll talk to you in a week. And how often a week later when you talk to people have they actually been able to sit down? Because I find that we live in the most ADD of all times. People can't even 15 – you know, I talk about reading a book a day, and people are like, I can't even read a page a day. Do yeah. you think – Well, you know, do you, well, is it discipline? Is it discipline yeah. or people just aren't educated to the value of focus? Yeah, see, I think it's I think it's a little both. I mean, I think unfortunately it's a complicated answer. I think, number one, that people are not educated on the value of focus. They use it. They say it. Uh, they're almost anesthetized to the idea of it, uh, and they've never been trained on how to do it. They've actually – they have bought into uh, the idea of multitasking, uh, the idea – I mean, you even hear stories that, 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 that research says that women are better at it than men, and you go, well, if multitasking is getting nothing effectively done, I don't think anybody wants to be known famously for being that good <laughs> at it. Uh, right. I think that's it. I think at the end of the day, people aren't just committed. I mean, if you ask me, say, you know, well, do you, do you have things that matter to you? Say, yeah. Well, how much do they matter? Do you want to master it? 
Do you want to be really good at it? Do you want it to change? Do you be so good at it that it defines and changes your life? Well, yeah. Okay, well, you're going to have to focus. Are you committed to doing that? So the biggest challenge that most people have is they haven't thought it through that way, and they're not accountable. I find that most people, their biggest issue is they haven't, they haven't submitted themselves to accountability. So when you look up and you say, well, these are all great questions you're asking, Gary, I would say, yeah, well, who's asking them that question? Who's holding them accountable to do it? Because at the end of the day, no one succeeds alone, and being held accountable is probably the most important thing in actually achieving your goals. You can't name me one athlete that is an elite athlete that doesn't have a coach. You can't name me one elite actor or actress who does not have a coach. You cannot name me one elite musician or artist who does not have a coach. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. I Power of mentors. If you list it out, it's everybody that does something big. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So, or let me add, this book, one of the great parts of this book is you have a, uh, if you, and if you don't have this book, trust me, go out and get it. There's a reason it's the number one Wall Street uh, Journal bestseller. You talk about embracing the chaos. And, and so I think part of the reason in my life that I haven't done, uh, been as focused is because the second you focus on one thing, a few things start to fall apart. And our natural tendency is to freak out and go, well, okay, I'm not, let's say, for example, you focus on your business. Well, all of a sudden, uh, you're not washing your clothes as much. All of a sudden, maybe you don't have time to cook as awesome of meals or maybe go out to restaurants. So you're like, oh, my social life is failing. Oh, my, you know, physical health is failing. And obviously, you don't want anything to go into complete chaos. But can you talk about how we need to learn to embrace some chaos that is inevitable when you become more focused? Sure. The problem is, is that most people haven't bought into the science of success. They buy, they buy into physical science. They don't find, they don't, they, they, that's easy, right? You say, look, do you, be, do you believe in air? And someone says, sure. I say, well, have you seen air? And they go, well, no. Well, you can't see air, Gary. I said, sure. No, no, you can't. I understand that. So why do you believe in it? Well, I've seen the effects of air. Oh, okay. So you believe in the science, the physical science of air because you haven't ever seen it, but you've seen the effect of it. Yeah, okay, great. Well, do you believe in gravity? Uh, well, well, yeah. Well, have you ever seen gravity? Well, no. So how do you believe in gravity if you haven't seen it? Well, I believe in the – I've seen the effects of gravity, and I don't want to defy gravity. You, know? you go, sure. So once again, you believe in the science, the physical sciences, not because you see it, but because you see the effects of it? Sure. Okay, well, that's the science of success. We don't see it, but we see the effects of actions in life. And people have lived before you, by the way. You're not the first person to try to wake up in the morning and have a life. So people over time, just like they've discovered the science, the physical sciences, if you will, they've also discovered the success sciences. Now, the problem is you've never studied the success sciences, nor do you give it credibility. So you have not given yourself over to faith of things unseen. We see the effects of your actions. So we can tell you that over time, these are the things you should do that, in fact, are going to give you a better chance of succeeding. But because you think it's a wise tale, you don't buy into it. But it's not. It's actually a success science based upon Mm -hmm. research and results. And by the way, the number one issue is the 80-20 principle. The 80-20 mm-hmm. principle is the foundational issue of all success. Why? Because it says that everything does not matter equally. And you're going to – if you have 100 things to do – let's, let's narrow it down. You have 10 things to do. 80-20 principle says that there's, there's a small amount that matters more than the rest. And it could be one. It could be two. It could be three. It's not specifically 20%, but it's going to be a small number. The problem is when you focus on those two or three, what's going to happen to the other seven? Mm-hmm. They're not going to get done, or they're going to have to wait. And you're going to have to make peace with the chaos or the mess that those things don't get done so that you get the other done. Oh, by the way, what a lot of people do is they say, well, I'd rather focus on the numbers, so I'm going to focus on the seven. The problem is you've mastered in the minors. What you've really done is majored in doing minor things that don't matter. So you're going to do all the other seven things, and that's only going to get you 20% to your goal. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, you say, that doesn't make any sense. I hate chaos. Well, fine. So what? Then jump off a building because you're going to defy gravity too. You're defying the science of success, and you think you're going to succeed anyway? You are not. You are, so, you're going to be average, and if you're above average, you got lucky. So basically what you're saying is you better embrace the 80-20, which comes with it, this chaos, 
because there is no other option except a mediocre life. So that's, that is a good way. Well, to that's right. And, and the biggest reason, well, and here's what happens is that only happens in the beginning until you have enough money to hire someone to mow your yard, and then your yard looks good again. And then you focus and you get a little more money, you hire someone to help you with your house. Now your house looks good again. And then, oh, by the way, you hire someone else, you make a little more money because you're focused and you're doing the right thing. So the next thing you know, you have enough money to hire an executive assistant, and they help you, so all of a sudden your office looks neat. And it keeps going. It's a leveraged game. What I tell people is you have not mastered the concept of leverage. So, look, did you build your car this morning? No. So you understand leverage, you, you, right? I mean, you didn't make your clothes. You didn't get this morning and, and actually go and hunt your food before you cooked it or grow your food before you cooked it. So you're already leading a leveraged life. So you need to understand that you're going to apply the 80-20 principle, and then when you get money into your possession, instead of buying more possessions, you're going to buy leverage to clear up the chaos. So you don't have to live in chaos that long. Right. Now, somebody listening, a mother, a father, somebody working two jobs, somebody who wants to keep and maintain physical health while making fi- you know, gains financially, while having a semblance of a social life, while having some time for themselves to be happy. In reality, even when you follow the 80-20 rule, nobody literally does one thing all day. So how does no, of course somebody… Not. Is it just a point? Well, here's what, I tell, here's what I tell my own employees. I get asked that all the time. It's a very common question. Well, how can I do that? It's just real simple. When your boss gave you a job description, what they gave you was a lie. And the lie was that if you do all 10 of these items on this list, you're, gonna, you're going to uh, be promoted or you're going to get paid more money or you're going to be more successful. That's not true. The way that yeah, you have a choice. In our organization, we have several hundred employees. If I give you a job description and you try to get it all done, most likely you're going to uh, keep your job at best. You might lose it, and that's the big mm-hmm. lie. And now, you need to be in charge of all those things, but here's the reality. When we prioritize the list of the 10 or 20 or 30 items on your job description, you need to realize that they're not all equal. Now, if you pick out the handful that matter most and you master those and you do those so well that someday I come in and say, oh, holy, holy crap, we, we need you doing we, – we're going to promote you. We're going to put you as a vice president of those five things, and I'm going to hire you an assistant to do the others, mm-hmm. and I'm going to pay you more money. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, is we fall into this trap early on of taking a job description, and then on the next thing you know, we have to have get multiple jobs because no one's giving us a raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think so. What it is then, in terms of this focus, it's <clears throat> it's understanding that inevitably, it's understanding that inevitably you do have to do multiple things. But is it a good sure. rule of thumb? We could say your main thing that you do, you spend three hours a day first. Because I've read and and experienced, do the hardest thing first. So. We yeah. know we're going to have to do things. And the hardest thing is not necessarily the issue. It may be hard, but the thing is do the most important thing first, not okay. the hardest thing. Right, right, right. Okay, so you do and, – and is that a kind of a good rule of thumb, three or four hours? They're obviously not going to be able to spend 11 hours on necessarily – Well, the thing. reason – let me tell you where that number comes from. The number comes from the, the, the concept of mastery, and the research says it's going to take somewhere close to 10,000 hours for you to do that. So it's going to take you four hours a day, five days a week for 10 years to master something. Now, mm. if, if you did that just for four or five years, you would already be ahead of 70, 60 percent, 80 percent. So you'd be, you'd be way ahead of the general population just after a couple of years. But if you wanted to get to the elite status – oh, by the way, if you want to be number one in the world in your category – by the way, let's back up. I've been number one in my city since I was 30 years old. Huh. I've been number one in the United States. I've been number one in the world. So I just didn't wake up tomorrow morning and all of a sudden achieve those things. The issue, the issue is, is you get that through focus. Yes. You get that through doing the key things, and that means you're going to have to be really good at the thing that drives that business more than anything else. When I was 25 years old, they made me the vice president of expansion for the largest real estate company in my market. And the reason they did that was because I did one thing better than all the other people that were applicants for the job. What was the one thing? Was it sales? I recruited, be- I recruited better. Huh. I, my sales management, my, I, I brought in more people into the firm who, su- who succeeded than anyone else. Huh. Everything else about the job I didn't care about. Yeah. I can leverage that. So, yeah, they complain about me in the bidding because, oh, my gosh, he's not doing this. Oh, he's not doing that. I says, well, I don't have time to do that. You gave me too many things. I always the problem is you're not, into, you're not into helping me be successful. You just want me to do the job. But I'm here to live the best life possible. 
and you're not you're actually not coaching me to do that yeah amazing yeah. stuff amazing stuff now this book well it's hard isn't it it's hard <laughs> listen to the tone of my voice listen to how tough this sounds and i don't mean it that way at all that's i'm i'm letting you listen to my inner voice this is the way I talk to myself because this is the harsh reality or the tough reality of making decisions. Less is more. You're not going to succeed by doing everything. You're going to succeed by doing the most important thing. Yeah. All right, so Gary, just people listening here, I like to put this out free for people uh, to find out about your book. I'm about to talk with Gary privately for all of those of you in the Accelerator program. Gary's going to talk on the things you need to know about making money making money in real estate, how it should be part of your portfolio. Then those of you in the accelerator, the entrepreneur level, we're gonna be talking about how to build a, build a real estate investment business, okay? Not just having a few properties. And lastly, we're gonna talk about marketing persuasion for those of you in the highest level. So uh, make sure if you're not in the accelerator, there should be a link here you can click. It'll take you to my website to explain how the accelerator works, okay? This is the premium program. I like to put out stuff free. But for those of the, you really interested, I, we have these premium level uh, stuff that I have too. So just putting that out there. All right, so click the link or you go to tylopez.com and you'll see the link there called the accelerator.